Are you sure? Always. Okay. Three, two. Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silvers, thank you very much for joining us. It's good of you to make time. I'm delighted to be with you as always, Liz. Okay, so this speech, your speech, first of all, when the governor came to you and said, we would like you to speak, it's an unusual thing. What was your initial reaction to that? My initial reaction was the state of the state is the governor's job. The governor should do it. And that was my initial reaction to it. He said, no, I'd like you to do something uh, up front, and Senator Skelos should do something as well. And I said, fine. And uh, that was my initial reaction. If you want us to do it, I'll, I'll do it if it, you want it done. But, you're, but you're fir on, upon first blush, you thought, it's your day. Like, why? Exactly. You know, I see. Exactly. Yeah. And also, when he said that he wanted to move it out of the chamber, it's the first time that this has been held outside the chamber since the 1920s, actually. There's, by law, this is a speech that the governor presents to the legislative leaders. He gave you those blue folders, right? So he gives you copies of the speech formally to everyone. Um, was your initial feeling, some of your members were offended. They felt snubbed. We've spoken to Assemblyman McEnany. Uh, did you feel snubbed by this? He and I spoke. If you looked at the release that announced it, we announced it jointly. Yep. Uh, we had sent out invitations, and we had an overwhelming response from our members, family of our members, friends of our members, and you know the general public. To have it here. To have it here. Right. At that point, and I think we announced this last Wednesday or Thursday, the response was overwhelming that we needed a bigger venue, basically, or we were going to really uh, challenge the fire marshals in the city of Albany uh, concerning how many people were going to get into the chamber. So he and I uh, collectively made that decision, although I know that the governor and his staff had spoken about it previously. Uh, the reality is this state faces many serious issues, and the issue in today's day and age with television, mm. with the internet carrying these programs across the state, it's the issues that should trump, and where a speech is given or is not given should be secondary. Mm. The issue is people want to live in their homes, they need uh, relief from the high property taxes in New York. We need jobs in New York, especially in the upstate communities. And we have to get together as a legislature and do what's right in dealing with the ec economy of this state. So it was a space issue that, ch that, that caused him to relocate it, not necessarily so much that he wanted to send some sort of message that change is possible in Albany and, and look at this, we've changed the venue just to prove to you that actually in a place that's known famously for log jams, we actually can make some sort of new start. The announcement was done by me and him uh, since we usually use the assembly chamber. Right. The invitations were put out by me and this house and uh, the response, as I said, was uh, significant and collectively we made that determination. You, your speech, I think that a lot of people that I've spoken to were struck by the conciliatory tone, uh, not to be surprising necessarily because during the campaign you said frequently that you planned to work with Andrew Cuomo. You're both Democrats, of course. You endorsed him and you said that you didn't think that you were going to have problems working with him, even though there was a lot of speculation that the two of you would butt heads. Did you, you said property tax cap, for example, you've been saying for a number of weeks about this. It wasn't something necessarily that your conference was so thrilled with at one point in time. Has that actually changed? In 1993 or 94, as the chair of the Ways and Means Committee in the New York State Assembly, we passed the property tax cap bill. But with a circuit I, breaker, didn't it have a circuit I breaker? I sponsored a property tax cap bill. Just straight? Uh, well, straight, obviously, with certain uh, conditions to it, etc. So the concept is all I'm saying of property tax cap is not foreign right. to the Assembly Conference. It goes back 16, 17 years. Yes, we've passed uh, property tax relief, and ultimately, no matter what the soundbite is, the fact remains that people need relief from high property taxes. We need to have a program that allows people to afford to live in their homes. The governor's absolutely right about that. 
Um, we need a program in the city of New York and its suburban communities that continues rent regulation for the same reason. People have to be able to afford to live in their homes. Okay, so we're now talking about a property tax cap and rent regulation extension in the same breath. Is this, are we well, talking about a trade? Same, I th no, no, I just think it's, it's the same concept. People have to be able to afford living in their homes. That's what it's about. And whether it's property taxes in single family homes on Long Island, Westchester, or all across the city and upstate New York, or it's rent regulation, which keeps the cost of rental property down so that people can afford to live. The concept is the same. The fact remains that people have to be able to afford to live in New York. But there That's would be what it's about. The question really is the details, right? The exemptions of that course, would be, but of and at this point we don't know what it would look like. 2% no. property tax cap is a sort of broad brush proposal. Okay, absolutely. It's a broad brush proposal. And you know, when the governor and we will get together with the governor and attempt to iron out uh, the details of it and, you know, Senator Skelos as well. Do you have some idea at this point what exemptions you would like to see? I, I think I would rather sit at a negotiating table and work it out before we make some public statements. I don't draw lines in the sand. I don't think it's productive. There were, uh, there have been a number of your members, um, a couple of, uh, of them, Assemblyman Gary Pretlow, for example, was speaking yesterday on numerous people, including on, on my show, saying he doesn't believe that the governor is going to be able to cut his way out of a $10 billion de budget deficit. The governor today said, um, no new taxes, no borrowing, I'm going to consolidate, I'm going to cut Medicaid, there's going to be competition for education aid, and there will not be any new revenue generation. Do you believe that that is actually possible? I, February 1st, the governor will present his budget. You know, today he presented the outline of his picture, his vision for New York. I think he did a fantastic job. His job now is, if you remember when you went to school and you painted by numbers, it's to fill in those numbers. Right. His budget presentation, February 1st, will be the first, picking up the first color and putting it in. That will be the budget. We will then be seeing his vision in reality, and we will deal with it. We will make a determination, has he cut too much? There's no question. We have to reduce what we spend in this state. There's no question about that. Nobody's going to argue that point. The question is, are we going to hurt people? How deep do we cut? Do we cut fat? Do we cut tissue? Or do we cut bone? That's really the issue. Do we take a knife or a cleaver, or do we use a scalpel? Okay, but are you ruling out what some of your members are calling for, which is the reauthorization of the three-year PIT surcharge, which was the temporary millionaire's tax, if you will. It's supposed to sunset at the end of 2011. Correct. I am not ruling anything out. I am not ruling anything in. What I am saying is when the governor presents a budget, we will look at the governor's budget, we will look at his projections in future years, and we will see what and how deep. I mean, for this year, that tax represents an estimate of a billion to a billion and a quarter in revenue. Uh, you know, can we make that billion or a billion and a quarter in additional cuts? We have a clearly a significant deficit. Can we make those additional cuts that are necessary to do it, or can't we make it? That's the determination that, again, no lines in the sand. I'm not drawing any lines in the sand. That's the determination the governor, the Senate, and we will have to make. Is that real? There's also been a question about borrowing. Now, when Richard Ravitch proposed it, the former lieutenant governor, he proposed a, a comprehensive package. It wasn't just, we're going to borrow our way out of debt. It was gap budgeting. It was reforms that were attached to borrowing to cover operating expenses, which is a pretty controversial thing. At the time, you signaled some support for it. Now, are you, you're not. I support gap budgeting. So, what about so borrowing? no, but I'm saying I believe that that was the appropriate way right. the uh, to get right. there on, on the gap uh, budgeting proposal. I still support gap uh, budgeting. I, don't think that borrowing is the way to go this year right now in terms of getting there. 
So You also s signaled a willingness to talk about redistricting reform, which I think made Ed Koch thrilled. He has told me that he's been talking to you about that redistricting reform. That's correct. Are you signing on to an independent redistricting commission, which is what he'd like to see? I think we will reach some sort of consensus with the governor, with Ed Koch, with the good government groups on an independent redistricting commission. Uh, you know, again, I think we still have to hammer out details on it, and that's what's important in almost everything we talk about at this point. What wasn't in his speech that you wish had been there? I mean, he talked about a lot of things. You think he did a great job. I really do think he did a great job. But there must have been something in there that you wish you had heard that wasn't there. Oh, there is nothing in there. I mean, he was, look, he is painting his vision. It's his vision for New York. We got a complete picture of his vision for New York. But his vision might not necessarily gel with yours. In other words, or some other people's. He didn't talk about affordable housing very much, for example. Correct. He didn't talk about I criminal understand. justice reform. He didn't talk about renewable energy so much. I mean, there were things that he didn't talk about. It's only 48 minutes, I understand. Exactly. But was there something in there that you, in particular, are really um, have always been a champion for education aid? And, and, and that's been something that the Assembly Democrats have talked about for ever, really. And he talked about competitive distribution of education aid. Is that something that you thought you could get on board with? Um, I, I, you know, we passed legislation in order to make us competitive on, a, race to the top. On, on the race to the top of national competition. So the idea of competitive education funds is not uh, abhorrent to us. I mean, the real idea is, do we, you know, forget about everybody else when we do that? That's, that's the real question that I, I don't support, but I don't think uh, the governor supports either. I think his background is, is as a progressive. I think his background understands, and his family history understands, and you know, he was very articulate on the juvenile justice piece. You know, the speech was 47 minutes. Um, there's only so long you can talk. You know, anybody can look at me and say, you didn't mention this, you didn't mention that. I think I spoke for four, maybe five minutes. We clocked uh, you at nine, actually. Uh, well, that was because <laughs> of all the applause. You had, right. <laughs> and you also had to thank a lot of people. Yes, right? that's, that's true as well. <laughs> but, you know, somebody can always be critical. I didn't say this or I didn't say that. True. But I was, you know, constrained by time. He was constrained by time. And uh, again, actions speak louder than words. So it's time to go on from here and do, as opposed to say, let's get the details. Well, I want to thank you very much for spending so much time with us. It's really great to see you. Thanks very much, and Happy New Year. Pleasure. Happy New Year to you and all of your viewers.